About every two minutes, a child dies from malaria. While nearly half of the world's population is at risk of malaria, over 90% of cases and deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa. The estimated number of cases is over 200 million per year, causing over 400,000 deaths. And children under 5 are especially vulnerable, accounting for over two-thirds of all deaths. I knew that a lot of children were dying of malaria, but there were certain things that I didn't know. Like I didn't know that sometimes a mother is gonna be in a village and her child has malaria, and she has eight kids, and one of them has malaria. And she's gonna to have to make that hard decision to let that one kid die of malaria so that she can stay with the seven other kids. Malaria is also an economic burden globally, as it costs an estimated $12 billion a year. Furthermore, in nations where malaria is severe, National incomes are just one-third of the nations where the disease is not as intense. So it is a financial and a health burden for many low-income communities. Malaria is caused by unicellular parasites of the Plasmodium genus that are transmitted from person to person through the bite of a female Anopheles mosquito. Once injected into the bloodstream, the parasite first travels to the liver, and after some time, the parasites infect and propagate in red blood cells, which eventually explode and release yet more parasites into the bloodstream. This stage manifests with bouts of high fever and chills, coinciding with batches of the parasite bursting out of the red blood cells. This can also cause anemia due to the destruction of red blood cells. Severe malaria can cause respiratory distress, cerebral symptoms, multi-organ failure, and ultimately, death. Now, the Anopheles mosquitoes lay their eggs in bodies of stagnant water that can be as small as a puddle, with different species having different water body preferences. The aquatic larvae developed into pupae and then adults over the course of several days, depending on the species, weather conditions, and other factors. The airborne adult mosquitoes feed on plant nectar for energy, but females require a blood meal in order to produce eggs. If the mosquito bites a person infected with malaria, she can draw the parasite along with her blood meal. Over the course of about a week and a half, the parasite reproduces and travels from the mosquito's gut into her salivary glands, at which point she is infectious to the next person she bites. Now it is important to control the mosquitoes to prevent the spread of malaria. Common mosquito control methods targeting the adult mosquito include insecticide-treated bed nets and indoor residual spraying. Bed nets are cheap and take advantage of the fact that most mosquitoes bite after dark, often when people are sleeping. An indoor residual spraying involves spraying insecticides on walls inside people's homes, where mosquitoes often rest after taking a blood meal, preventing the mosquito from biting the next person. Both of these methods are limited by the development of insecticide resistance and mosquitoes adapting to the bite outdoors and during the day. The method of larval source management, or LSM, which targets mosquito larvae in the water bodies where they develop, bypasses the challenges of the other two methods. By spraying mosquito breeding sites with larvae-specific insecticides, also called larviciding, or eliminating these water bodies entirely, LSM controls the mosquito population at its source. Furthermore, larviciding is the only method proven to successfully eradicate malaria rather than just lower it. It has been tried and tested in Israel, Egypt, Greece, Italy, and many other places. It has not been used extensively in sub-Saharan Africa because it is harder to work there and it rains a lot, creating a lot more water bodies. This is where companies such as Zap Malaria come in. They are changing the game when it comes to malaria prevention using larviciding. Malaria is one of the biggest problems in the world and it kills a lot of people in the villages around here and in Africa as a continent. Zap Malaria is about malaria elimination. So we actually set the ambitious goal to map the water bodies in the villages around here and then to spray them. So we actually protect the people from malaria. Malaria transmission is a bit different in every country, but our artificial intelligence is capable of learning it. Zap Malaria has essentially developed a solution to resolve the operational difficulties involved in targeting stagnant water bodies for mosquito control using larviciding. By analyzing satellite images and topographical maps, ZAP's AI identifies malaria transmission hotspots, which are areas where water bodies and human populations coincide. 
Introducing Zap, a map and image-based app that guides you through the spraying process. The app displays a clear map of your surroundings, marks scanned areas, and allows you to flag each water source as treated or untreated. So now you can scan and treat all water sources in the area and eliminate malaria. Depending on the resources available, ZAP's system prioritizes areas to generate the most impact on disease transmission. Cost and time-effective strategies are communicated to field workers using a designated map-based mobile app. The app guides workers in the identification, reporting, and treatment of water bodies, which streamlines the implementation. Today we got here to join the sprayers to learn to get feedback on the app and the process. Data collected by the field workers feeds back into the system for constant improvement of algorithms and recommendations, thereby increasing the accuracy and effectiveness of malaria control. Zap Malaria also has an interesting background story of collaboration for arriving at their solution. This is where Om Dana enters with an expertise in artificial intelligence solutions. 50 collaborators around the world joined the Omdena and Zap Malaria effort to create an AI-based mosquito breeding site detection model. The model helps to identify breeding sites quicker and more accurately to prevent future malaria deaths. The biggest challenge of this project was to automatically identify stagnant water bodies to allow more cost-effective surveys in new areas. The time is limited since water bodies need to be analyzed before the wet season arrives leading to a rise in mosquito breeding. During the Omdena project, Zap Malaria was surveying the regions of Obuasi in Ghana and Amhara in Ethiopia of the African subcontinent. Therefore, the data they sent came in periodic batches. The majority of the data was being sourced during the period of the project as it was a wet season in the above-mentioned areas. The primary challenges faced by the Omdena team were that there was a lack of enough data. To solve the lack of data issue, the Omdina team devised a two-step approach. Firstly, they detected the presence of large water bodies like lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds using AI. This was achieved using the state-of-the-art vision models like the deep water map, which produced a probability map given a grid. This was in itself a useful way to trace the surrounding regions of interest, as we humans tend to settle around large water bodies. Since these images alone cannot comprehensively convey water presence, the team created more features using variables such as population density, vegetation indices, topography, and land cover classifications. As the population density of a given region decreases, the land distance to water increases. The team thought of leveraging this fact to interpret the risk of mosquito breeding grounds based on how densely populated a region is. Next comes the use of a vegetation index. Since mosquito density is correlated positively with vegetation density, it is an important parameter. A vegetation index is a spectral transformation of two or more satellite bands or wavelengths designed to enhance the contribution of vegetation properties and allow reliable spatial and temporal comparisons of photosynthetic activity and canopy structural variations. In order to gain information about the terrain, the team used a labeled dataset that was specifically released for the African subcontinent. LandCoverNet is a labeled global land cover classification dataset based on a satellite called Sentinel-2. Finally, topographical data was obtained from models called digital elevation models. This data enables the estimation of water flow. Since mosquitoes breed in stagnant water, the flow needs to be close to zero, which is possible when the elevation difference is minimal. The topographic features were instrumental in detecting natural sources of water. Using the aforementioned data sources, the Omdena team ended up generating 81 features, and after a round of exploratory data analysis, they were able to finalize on the top 20 most relevant features for predicting mosquito breeding grounds. Then they set out to build and validate models that could best capture the information in each of the data sources. The final models were able to predict whether a selected water body is a potential breeding ground for the Anopheles mosquitoes or not. I'm very grateful to our friends from Israel for introducing this uh, app to us. It's going to simplify everything. I can sit in my office and then be able to monitor the activities on the field. The system is so phenomenal and I'm quite excited about this program.
This is just one example of how AI has been used for solving real-world problems and social issues. Omtina has worked on dozens of AI for good projects and there are numerous examples of how teams across the globe have made a positive impact with AI. At Omdena, our mission is to use AI to create a positive change. It's amazing what we can be able to change the world with a strong community and the power of AI. It's our responsibility to build the future technologies to change the world. Let's build tech for good. We hope that you learned something new from this video. So please do like this video, share it on your network and subscribe to our channel for more. So be safe, stay tuned for new videos and thank you so much for watching.